are intimate, frequently being held in backyards or homes. And the biggest difference, the price. A standard wedding costs, on average, $39,000, while a micro wedding could come out under $1,000. Nicole Scaduto was supposed to be married in July, but as the date grew closer, crowd and dining restrictions made her change her plans. I just started thinking of what else can we do? And that was a micro wedding. We felt so relieved after we got married and that we did do this micro wedding and the stress and not knowing what to do, it kind of all went away. And I just think the micro wedding was the best decision. As a fourth generation member of a family owned supermarket chain, Nicole reimagined how the business could help couples like her and her fiance, whose wedding plans were impacted by the pandemic. So she created Grace's Garden Custom Events. I wanted to offer this to like other couples going through the same thing. I got everything from Food Town. I got my wedding cake, I got food to get ready, I got all my florals. I was like, we have to do this micro wedding pack. Nicole building an option for couples including flowers, drinks, food, and cake. What separates us from a wedding venue is just like the convenience and you don't have to worry about doing this all yourself. We're essential in this pandemic and we can help you get married. Now happily married, Nicole says the best advice she can give is move forward with your wedding, even if you have to make it micro. Cool story there. Yeah, thanks to Whit Johnson for that report. Everything changing during COVID-19, of course. All right, well, uh, this morning's top stories and a full hour of Island News, including our continuing election coverage, kicks off right now. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now at 7 o'clock on your Sunday on Good Morning Hawaii, Hawaii's first all-mail in election comes to an end with historic turnout. We'll have a live report from the convention center as we continue to wait on that final count for our primary election. Plus, hundreds of thousands of people sending in those ballots across Hawaii making history in a state that's known for low turnout, this time breaking records for highest ever turnout in a primary. And a big shakeup right now in Honolulu politics. The top two contenders in the race for mayor, both new to the political scene. How that'll impact the race for Honolulu Hale come this November. Good morning, Hawaii. Happy Sunday. Thanks for joining us for Hawaii's only weekend morning newscast. I'm Tom George. And of course, we are continuing our coverage of the election uh, well into the night and now into the morning. A lot of big races decided, but still waiting on those final numbers from Honolulu County. Annalisa standing by there at the convention center. That's right. Good morning, Tom. Aloha, everybody. Annalisa Burgos here at the Hawaii State Convention Center. Uh, we've been watching as state election staff calculate count this final 17,000 to 18,000 ballots for Honolulu County. So again, these came in at about 4.30. Uh, staff have been working to just take them out of the envelopes and then they will proceed to scan them through the machines and then we'll have the final results for election day. But the other counties, meantime, have been completed, those counts. I wanted to give you at least the record turnout we've been talking about for the primaries here in Hawaii. Hawaii, uh, the Big Island showing a 53.3% turnout rate. Very, very good. Um, and, and we're going to tell you a little bit about the, the mayor's race there that has been called. Uh, Maui, for sure, also had a 42.7% turnout rate. Pretty good as well. And Kauai had a 49.6% turnout for the registered voters there and we again are following a lot of these races uh, Honolulu um, again these are the final ballots that they're counting but none of them really will make an impact on uh, some of the races that we're seeing uh, the turnout so far from the numbers last night was 48.8 percent of registered voters turned out so a very good showing all across the board for voters again uh, calling it a success smooth no big heck hiccups. Uh, there was some questions from viewers and I want to address that. Uh, just the fact that there were some people that got notifications that their vote may have had issues or their ballot had issues with signatures and we spoke to uh, 
Chief Elections Officer Scott Nago about that. And if you did get that letter, you still have about five days to resolve that issue to get your vote counted. So make sure you check your mail and see if that's one of, um, that affects you. All right, so Tom, that's it from here, but we're, we're going to actually tell you about some of the, the close races. Again, the mayor's race uh, will let you update us on that. All right, thanks, Annalisa. Looking forward to those numbers as they come in. And meanwhile, this year's all mail in election was a success by many accounts. As KITV4's uh, TJ Horgan reports, more than 380,000 people across the state turned in those ballots during Saturday's primary. That's the highest in history. Lulu Hale Saturday, residents were out in full force exercising their constitutional right, voting for the candidates they hope will best address their concerns. I think uh, we definitely need to take care of the homeless situation. I think we got some really serious uh, concerns about with the uh, with the coronavirus, with uh, people staying healthy, and then figuring out how to get our economy back rolling again. 2020 was the first year of mail-in voting, but those who didn't send in their ballots in time could still drop them off in designated reception boxes like these. It, it worked fine. Showed up in the mail, uh, waited until the last minute as usual, and uh, read through the instructions. Did a little bit of online research for some of the candidates, and then I went ahead and filled it out. And dropped it off. Representative Chris Lee helped write the bill that moved Hawaii to a mail-in voting format. Voting by mail works in every state that's tried it, but we just weren't sure how quickly people would adopt it here. And looking at the results so far, we've already seen you know 40 percent more people voting by mail here in Oahu than we saw in the entire 2016 primary, which is really encouraging. And for those who didn't vote by mail, they could register and vote in the same day at Honolulu Hale. Until 7 o'clock, that is. TJ Horgan, KITV4, Island News. Yeah, and that big turnout also uh, impacting some of the big races, of course, top of the ticket there. Honolulu mayor, a big race there. Uh, really a big shakeup in Oahu politics. The top two there, both political newcomers. So it looks like the general election in November is going to be between Rick Blangiardi and Keith Amamiya. So you see the vote order right there. Rick Blangiardi with 25.4% of the vote. Keith Amamiya there in second with 20.4%. They will face off in November to see who becomes the next mayor of the city and county of Honolulu. Uh, and just shy there, former Congresswoman Colleen Hanabusa just missing the general election there in third place with 18.4% of the vote. And in fourth place, uh, current Councilwoman Kim Pine with 14.3% of the vote. And as you saw right there, taking the lead in the Honolulu mayor race last night, political newcomer Rick Blangiardi. KTV4's Paul Drews shows us how he managed to pull off a ticket to November. After the first printout, which represented all the ballots cast through Friday, Rick Blangiardi led in the race for Honolulu mayor, with Keith Amamiya behind by more than 12,000 votes. The top two finishers will now square off in the general election to see who will head to Honolulu Hale, which means instead of campaigning against a crowded field of more seasoned politicians, he'll be squaring off against another first-time contender. So a very different dynamic. So when we wake up tomorrow, we're going to begin our strategy. Uh, we were hoping to get in this situation. And I give it Kim, to be very candid with you, given the contrast in who we are as candidates, irrespective, I think the only common denominator we might have is we're both new to politics. Blangiardi identifies as an independent candidate, which some feel could hurt his chances with Hawaii's large number of Democratic voters. The office of mayor is a nonpartisan one, and Blanchiardi wants residents of Oahu to focus on the job itself. It's a leadership job. It's about decision making. It's about how people perceive someone they can trust to take the responsibility of the city, surround themselves with the kinds of people who can work hard and work towards a future that's going to be very different than where we've been. It's about that stuff, not party politics. Blangiardi comes from a business background and used his platform on TV to criticize current Hawaii leaders, from the governor to Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell, over issues he disagreed with. Even though he is now one step closer to taking over the job of mayor himself, he's not concerned about becoming the target of criticism. You can't please all the people all the time, but if you're doing a really good job, then then you can take the criticism. I'm not I'm not worried about that. The challenge here is to do the right things by the people of this island. 
Hawaii is reeling from the COVID pandemic, and the next mayor of Honolulu will inherit a slumping economy, high unemployment, and health care concerns. But Blangiardi wants the job and says he'll step up his campaign in order to reach voters with his message. We plan to give it everything we have, and um, we look forward to the next three months. We plan to work harder than we've ever worked before. So Paul Drews, KITV4 Island News. The voters tonight for turning out. And another political newcomer, Keith Amamiya, coming in second for the Honolulu mayor's race uh, with more than 52,000 ballots as of last count last night. Now that makes up 20.4% of the vote for Honolulu mayor. This was also the first ca political campaign for the former head of the Hawaii High School Athletics Association. But he did tell KITV4 he's ready to hit the campaign trail again ahead of the general election. There were a lot of worthy candidates in this election. There were 15 of us in total. There were people that voted for 14 other candidates, and I'd love to listen, learn, hear what their issues are and what they have to say, and I'd obviously love for them to consider voting for me in the general election. And if elected, Amamiya said he'd like to focus on reopening the economy safely, building affordable housing, and tackling the homeless issue on Oahu. Yeah, and as he mentioned, uh, two political newcomers heading to the general election actually beating out some well-known uh, names. Meanwhile, it was deja vu for former U.S. Congresswoman Co uh, Colleen Hanabusa. Another disappointing night for her, just two years after her narrow loss to Governor David Ige in the 2018 primary. This time in her run for mayor of Honolulu, also coming up just a few thousand votes short of moving on to the general election. Now, Hanabusa, one of the best-known names in the race and was an early favorite, she touted her experience as part of her campaign but ended up losing out to uh, Amamiya and Blangiardi, the two newcomers. I asked her about that at her headquarters in Kalihi last night. She tells me she says she just couldn't compete with the big money that was thrown into the race. When you look at the amount of money that was spent on media and the fact that we were in a COVID kind of lockdown situation, I think that that changed the whole dynamics of how campaigns uh, run. But I think to the general, we'll have the repeat of the same thing. So I, you know, people should be get a lot of TV because that's what we've seen here. When you would have that. Now, of course, Hanabusa spent a total of almost seven years in Congress, and in between those terms, she had another narrow loss in 2014. That was for the U.S. Senate. She lost to Brian Schatz. So the question is, would she try again for another office? She tells me right now she's not sure what her political future holds, but she says she still wants to serve our community on Oahu in some way. Meanwhile, turning to some of the other big races, another big one we were tracking, the Honolulu prosecuting attorneys race. This, of course, was a big deal, especially in the light of the Kealoha corruption case. A lot of uh, contenders wanted to kind of move forward from that era. In that race, uh, former judge Steve Alm coming in first right now with 35.5 percent of the vote. Uh, Megan Cow in second with 20.9 percent of the vote. Uh, Alm and Cow will move on to the uh, November election. Third place there, Jackie Esser. She got a lot of attention, uh, a lot of high profile endorsements, including uh, Bernie Sanders endorsing her campaign. Uh, she narrowly missed uh, the general election coming in third with 16.6%. Meanwhile, over on the Big Island, uh, a big upset there. Uh, incumbent Mayor Harry Kim completely locked out of the general election, defeated by uh, two candidates that will now face off in November to become the next mayor of the Big Island. Those two top candidates there, Mitch Roth coming in first with 31.1% of the vote, and in second place, Ikaika Marzo with 21.2% of the vote. But of course, the big headline there, current Mayor Harry Kim in third place, the incumbent completely knocked out of the general, defeated for another term. It'll be Roth and Marzo uh, for Big Island mayor in the fall. And every state representative seat was up for grabs last night and a couple close races to tell you about. District 13 that encompasses uh, Molokai, uh, Lanai, as well as East Maui. Uh, incumbent Lynn DeCoy keeps her seat with 48.2% of the vote there. Walter Reed did give her a run for her money though, 46.9%. Uh, now last night that margin was only 29 votes. Now with uh, uh, all the votes counted, 91 
was the number of votes separating those two. So again, Linda Coit being called the winner for that particular race. Um, and then we are watching also the state representative race for District 26, Makuli, Kaka'ako, downtown Honolulu, and incumbent and House Speaker Scott Saiki there has been in the office for more than 25 years, and he is leading with 47.2% of the vote, uh, but giving him a run for money, uh, Kim Koko Iwamoto, 43.7% uh, trailing uh, with, uh, with the vote there. She served on the State Board of Education and would also be the first openly transgender state lawmaker in Hawaii history. So another very close race we are all watching. All right, as Annalisa mentioned, uh, we're still waiting on those Honolulu numbers, so going to keep track of that close race there. The Speaker of the House getting a run for his money right there. And we have a full list of primary election results on our website for you at KITV.com. You can also stick with KITV4 for continuing coverage of the 2020 election, both on air and online. But enough about politics right now. I want to turn things over to a fun topic, weather. You're looking uh, live out there right now. Allison Valdez, how's it shaping up? Hey Tom, happy Sunday and good morning Hawaii. Thanks for joining us. We're taking a live look at Honolulu where the clouds just covered that sunrise coming up over Diamond Head. We also have some raindrops on our camera lens there. We're waking up to 78 degrees and winds coming in from the east northeast at 10 miles per hour. Now it is going to be a breezy end to our weekend. Winds are on the lighter side right now, but trades, easterly trades should reach 15 to 25 miles per hour. And you know what? It'll help a lot with the heat. Kahului record breaking high yesterday at 93 degrees. Oahu was also a hot spot, reaching 90 in Kapolei and 89 in Honolulu, and we will see similar warm temperatures today. We're off to a bit of a cooler start, though. Current temperatures are in the mid to upper 70s, already 80 in Kahului and in Kaneohe. So today we just have some light morning rain focused over those windward Anamauka areas. Our daytime high is 89 degrees with easterly winds reaching up to 15 miles per hour. And then later on this afternoon, once that morning rain clears up, it'll be partly cloudy and warm, and later on in the day, our overnight low will be 72 degrees. That's a check on your weekend weather. I'll have more on your island by island forecast later on. But first, here's Tom. Back to you. All right, get out there and enjoy it. Thanks, Allison. Well, time now, 714, and the total number of COVID-19 cases across the state is now at more than 3,300. And as that number continues to rise, the state's largest jail now reporting more inmates who are testing positive for the virus. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Sunday morning. Stay with us. Mary worried about her dad. Was he safer at home all alone, or was he too isolated? Mary struggled not knowing the right thing to do. Then she learned about the plaza and all they're doing to keep residents safe, engaged, and connected. Now her dad has new friends, is more active, and checks in regularly. Instead of worrying, Mary finally feels relieved. Find out if the plaza is right for you or your loved one. When you mask pain and you're actually damaging yourself more, trust me, I've felt it the next day worse than it was prior to that game. And it's not a good feeling. We all have pain in different areas of our lives. And I think the best form of recovery is talking to people, talking to your loved ones. If no one knows that you're in pain, no one's gonna be able to help you. Just know that you're not alone and there are resources out there to help you. If you or someone you love needs access to substance use treatment services, call Hawaii Cares today. Delayed breast cancer diagnosis. Plaintiff wins $700,000. Medical malpractice. Plaintiff wins $1.2 million. Brain damage. Plaintiff wins $8 million. Emphasizing personal injury and medical malpractice cases, Judith Pavey has won millions of dollars for her clients. With over 33 years of practicing law, Judith Pavey is one of the most experienced trial lawyers in the state of Hawaii. Judith Pavey, powerful representation. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union sends a hanahoa thanks to our employees. These individuals are truly remarkable as they have rallied together to ensure steady operations. I've kept facilities, stepped up to help the community, as well as juggle their personal needs. And they do it for you, our account holders throughout Hawaii and the world. We thank all account holders for their support and understanding. Mikhail aloha pumehana. We appreciate all of you for life. Good morning, Hawaii.
All right, welcome back. Well, new this morning, a pickup truck drove through the YNI 7-Eleven early this morning. You see right there, this is the intersection of Lualua Lay Homestead Road and Farrington Highway. You can see in this video, the window shattered right there uh, with the vehicle parked right outside. Now, Honolulu police were on scene there. No word yet on any injuries or what caused that crash. Well, meanwhile, the number of COVID-19 cases across the state has surpassed 200 a day again. The Department of Health reporting 231 new cases yesterday, 223 of them, the vast majority there on Oahu, five over on the Big Island and three on Maui. Now, there are now 3,346 cases total reported since the pandemic started in late February. Here in Hawaii, there are also now 1,781 presumed active cases in the state right now. Most of those are on Oahu. Now, the state also reported another COVID-19 related fatality yesterday. That brings our total death toll to 31. According to the health department, the elderly Oahu man over the age of 60 died yesterday. Now, they also removed a previously reported death involving an elderly woman on Oahu. Her doctor determined that she actually died from an underlying health condition and not COVID-19. So that death toll remains at 31 here in Hawaii. Well, new this morning, two, uh, two more inmates at the Oahu Community Correctional Center tested positive for COVID-19. According to the Department of Public Safety, they got those results back last night. A total of three inmates are now infected. The health department is now working on contacting anybody who may have come in contact with them. And also new this morning, another Honolulu City bus driver testing positive for the virus. According to the Oahu Transit Services, that employee received their results yesterday. They're now under self-quarantine. Their last day at work was on Monday. They were driving Route 42, so if you take that route, may want to look out there. They would have been from 107 to 1027 p.m. Now, they showed no symptoms while they were driving. Well, as COVID-19 clusters continue to pop up in our community, more people are trying to get tested for the virus, and they don't want to wait around for those results. KTV4's Annalisa Burgos shows us how one test can cut down on the wait time. More Hawaii clinics are offering rapid COVID-19 testing to ease community fears. Because anxiety is real. To anybody who has ever experienced anxiety, uh, try telling them it's all in their head. Doctors on call Maui held a drive through clinic in Honokawai using the Kaidel rapid nasal swab test that produces results in 15 minutes. The test is FDA approved and has a more than 96% accuracy rate. Identifying positive cases quickly, he says, is key to containing the virus, especially on neighbor islands where hospital resources are limited. By applying rapid testing and identifying asymptomatic uh, positives early, uh, that we can uh, effectively uh, get those people out of the line of fire, so to speak, and, st and stop the exposure and hopefully can avoid some of the clusters and some of the, the workplace and cluster situations that we've seen on Oahu. At about $65 a test and the ability to process 40 tests an hour, clinicians say it's a portable, cost-efficient alternative to the standard PCR test that requires samples be sent to a lab. Last week, a shortage of reagents and samples being sent to the mainland delayed test results by five to seven days, valuable time lost for contact tracing. Another reason more clinicians are advocating for rapid testing. On Oahu, Premier Medical Group Hawaii and Kalihi Kai Urgent Care already do rapid testing. It's ideal uh, for areas where we can anticipate large number of exposures. That means workplaces, schools, and airports, all vital for Hawaii's economic recovery. All right, well, time now, 721. Here's a live look, a pretty uh, gloomy view there out on the windward side, Kaneohe Bay. Allison's going to be back with a look at your weather to finish up your weekend. That's after the break. Time now, 721. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii on your Sunday morning. Accurate and experienced, KITV4's Island Weather Team. We love our new home. There's so much space. We have a guest room now. But we have ants. You're slouching again, Ted. Expired. Expired. 
Expired. Thanks, Aunt Bonnie. It's a lot of house. I hope you can keep it clean. At least GEICO makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save a lot of money. Oh, Teddy, did you get my friend request? Oh, uh, I'll have to check. Aunt Joni's here. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. Hello, I'm Franklin Graham. Are you fed up? Are you wanting to get your life back, but you don't know which way to turn? You don't know who to believe. You don't know what the truth is. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he'll guide and direct every step you take. God loves you, and he wants to forgive you, but the problem we face is sin, and our sins separate us from God. Jesus took our sins to the cross, and if you're willing to trust him as your Savior, and pray a prayer with me right now, God will forgive your sins and he'll heal your heart. Just pray this prayer, God, I've sinned, I'm sorry, forgive me. I believe Jesus is your son, and I want to trust him as my savior, and I want to follow him for the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer, call that number that's on the screen. We've got people that'd like to pray with you right now. Do it now. God bless you, and call that number. I'm Franklin Graham. As a graduate gemologist, my commitment is to make sure you get the most for your unwanted jewelry. Whether you're selling gold, diamonds, or fine watches like Rolex or Cartier, come in today and see what your jewelry's worth. We always pay cash. With over 23 years in business, Pacific Diamond is Hawaii's choice. Visit one of our two locations on Kapiolani and the Waimalu Plaza in Aea. Good morning, Hawaii. Welcome back. It's 723 on this Sunday, and we are waking up to scattered showers across the islands. Now, zooming in for a closer look, Kauai County is seeing some pockets of rain nearly Hue and Kaloa just moving offshore there. But take a look at Oahu. A lot of activity on our radar, a band of rain stretching along the windward coast and Mauka areas, as well as where we'll have the highest chance of rain for this morning. Over on Maui County, some light showers near Hana and north above Molokai and on the Big Island, looking pretty dry here compared to the rest of the state. We are waking up to again just those trade showers for the Windward and Mauka areas, mainly for those areas. And then once that morning rain clears up, it'll be partly cloudy and a warm afternoon, 89 degrees by midday. But thankfully, those breezy trades will keep things feeling cool. East winds up to 25 miles per hour. And if you want to go outside, take a hike. And if you're not on Oahu and you want to enjoy the beach, please do so. Mahalo to Jocko for sending us this island pick of West Oahu. If you want to head outdoors, we have morning trade showers and a sunnier afternoon. Our high is 89 degrees. I'll have more on your surf later on in the show, but first, here, we're going to go ahead to break. You are watching Good Morning Hawaii. We'll be right back. Keeping you safe and healthy. KITV4 Island News. The military outreach team is a liaison for the students' needs. We show them what they can do based off what they want. I'm in a unique position in this role because I've gone through every type of a scenario that many students go through watching them evolve. That is very fulfilling for me because I remember what it was like taking that first step and I continue to help people through that process because if it matters to them, then it matters to me. American Military University. Learn from the leader. Shop at over 47 stores for beauty and health, specialty stores, gifts, and clothing, financial and professional services with restaurants and a supermarket. Join us for Farm Fresh Fridays for your favorite pop up vendors. At Matanuska Valley Federal Credit Union, we want you to know we consider you to be our Ohana. We are again offering the Ohana loan for your Ohana's needs. This loan is a great low interest rate loan offered at the Waipahu Community Office. Come in and see Frances and her staff in Waipahu, located at 94144 Farrington Highway in the Don Quixote Annex. The Ohana loan is the MVFCU way. Mary worried about her dad. Was he safer at home all alone? Or was he too isolated? Mary struggled not knowing the right thing to do. Then she learned about the plaza and all they're doing to keep residents safe, engaged, and connected. 
Now her dad has new friends, is more active, and checks in regularly. Instead of worrying, Mary finally feels relieved. Find out if the plaza is right for you or your loved one. KITV4 Island News, honored with the Edward R. Murrow Award for Breaking News. It's Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now 727 on your Sunday morning and hundreds of families right now are struggling to make ends meet during this pandemic. Well, they got some help at Waimanalo District Park yesterday. A drive through event called groceries, <laughs> chef prepared meals, personal protective equipment and even school supplies to families in need. The event was held by Child and Family Services. It's all part of a series of drive through giveaways that are happening throughout the state. And a big thanks to your help, KITV4's Ho'okupu, or giving campaign, has raised more than $45,000 so far. We partnered up with Helping Hands Hawaii to buy grocery store gift cards for families who are struggling to put food on the table right now. But there's still time to give. To find out how you can help out, visit our website, kitv.com slash give. A huge thank you to everybody out there who has already stepped up. Don't go away. Time now, 728. More news and weather coming up. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Okay, May Lynn, we have everything set up. Mobility Solutions. Call us today for a free consultation. St. Francis Healthcare System is creating something new and exciting. The St. Francis Kupuna Village in Liliha. The former hospital campus is being transformed into a health and wellness community for seniors and their caregivers. Featuring a skilled nursing facility and an array of physicians in different specialties. With future plans for assisted living and independent living and a senior community center. Call today for more information. St. Francis Healthcare System. Creating healthy communities for Hawaii's families. It's Mattress Firm's Summer Save and Sleep event. Hurry in and don't miss savings of up to $300 on our top-rated brands. Plus, get a free adjustable base with select mattress purchase of $6.99 or more. Or get up to 50% off select mattresses from our best-selling brands like Beautyrest, Serta, and Sleepies. Don't wait. Shop in-store, online, or by phone with a sleep expert for these amazing deals. Only at Mattress Firm. I'm Amber. As a graduate gemologist, my commitment is to make sure you get the most for your unwanted jewelry. Whether you're selling gold, diamonds, or fine watches like Rolex or Cartier, come in today and see what your jewelry's worth. We always pay cash. With over 23 years in business, Pacific Diamond is Hawaii's choice. Visit one of our two locations on Kapiolani and the Waimalu Plaza in Aiea. From KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. All right, welcome back. Time now, 7.30, continuing our election coverage. Of course, we've been following this well into the night, now stretching into the morning. Uh, some races still hanging in the balance. At last check, we know that there are still some outstanding votes uh, on Oahu, waiting for those final numbers. Annalisa has been standing by. You mentioned they were counting. Any updates at this point, Annalisa? Not yet, Tom. Uh, you know, again, they gave us a heads up that these 17,000 to 18,000 ballots for Honolulu County just came in at 4.30 a.m., and they are going to take a few hours before they count them all. So they're in the process now, state election staff and a few volunteers going through, uh, taking the ballots out of the envelopes, flattening them out, and then scanning them through manually through the machines, three machines they tell me that are working hard to get those final votes in because everyone counts again. You know, one of those close races we talked about was for, um, you know, uh, the state representative with uh, Scott Psyche. There, that's so close, just a few thousand deciding between those two uh, candidates. And so we'll be waiting to see what happens with that. But overall, the other counties um, have completed their counts. So just to remind you, uh, the Big Island, 53.3% uh, of the vote coming in um, of registered uh, voters actually submitted their ballots. And uh, Maui, 42.7% of uh, voter turnout 
pretty good there. And then Kauai, 49.6%. And Honolulu, 48.8% so far without these numbers being included. So all across the board, all counties breaking records for Hawaii primary, a Hawaii primary election. Um, in the past, the statewide turnout was only 38.6%. So overall, Scott Nago, the uh, chief elections officer, told me that it was a smooth uh, first all mail-in election. We're just, again, waiting for these final counts. But, you know, Tom, we, we've been talking about how this uh, democ witnessing democracy in progress, and overall it's been pretty good. We've been hearing a lot of good feedback from voters. Yeah, and you know, well, so sometimes you have to stay patient as, as they count those votes, of course. And as you mentioned, some of these, uh, you know, some of these races, of course, Honolulu mayor, Honolulu prosecutor already decided, but you mentioned some of these local races on Oahu, especially that House race, the incumbent speaker uh, fighting his for his political life. I mean, you have those 17, 8,000 Oahu votes. Those could make a difference. So uh, any, any idea how much more longer until those, uh, those final Honolulu ballots come in at this point? Honestly, they keep saying it would it could take a few more hours. So we've been here live since you know 4:30 in the morning, waiting to see if they can release anything to us. But again, there's they were just working hard at it, trying to get those final votes counted. And you know, we never know. We we've already talked about um, Honolulu mayor and Honolulu prosecuting attorney. Um, you know the the runoffs for those races. But again, 17,000, 18,000 votes. It actually, I don't know, I, I, again, we have to wait and see. That's why I, I remember you were talking with uh, Colleen Hanabusa about, you know, holding off on conceding in that race. And so I, I don't know if anything that will happen here this morning will change any of that today. Okay, so let's uh, actually talk about another one of those races that we were closely following, Honolulu prosecuting attorney, uh, former Judge Steve Alm there, taking 35.5% of the vote, and Megan Cow, 20.9% uh, following. That's without these ballots that we are counting this morning, of course, but uh, it's uh, safe to say that those two will be moving on to the general election. Jackie Esser had come in third with about 16.6 percent of the vote. And then again, we mentioned that close race over on Maui County with uh, incumbent Linda Coit for District 13 uh, state representative, 48.2 percent of the vote going to her. And Walter Ritty really giving her a run of, for her money, 46.9 percent of the vote went to him. And that's a difference of only 91, 91 votes. So uh, last night it was as small as 29, but uh, this morning calling it for incumbent Linda Coit. Yeah, and, and you know, as the saying goes, every vote really does count, especially in these uh, s small legislative uh, races. And and as a matter of fact, speaking of, take a look at this. I mean, this is this is really a shocking race right now. The current House Speaker of in, in Hawaii, Scott Psyche, fighting for his political career right now. Look at how close that is. This is the uh, District 26 seat. Uh, Scott Psyche has represented that district for t at least 25 years. Of course, also the Speaker of the House in Hawaii, facing a tight race there that in that district that covers Kaka'ako, Makali, and downtown Honolulu. The incumbent speaker there, 47.2% of the vote right now, facing a tough challenge there uh, from his left on, with uh, Kim Koko Iwamoto. She, of course, ran for uh, lieutenant governor back in 2018. She also served on the State Board of Education. She has 43.7% of the vote right now, but that's only a matter uh, of, of a, a very close margin there right now. And as Annalisa mentioned, if we get those uh, final numbers in from Oahu, that could change. Also, uh, an another interesting note there, uh, if Iwamoto wins the seat, she would also be the first openly transgender state lawmaker in Hawaii history. But take a look at that. I mean, the, the current House Speaker there uh, facing a really tight race there. All right, turning now to the Big Island, though, uh, another, another big upset there over on the Big Island, the current uh, Mayor Harry Kim, who's been in office uh, for several terms, uh, of course, faced a lot of criticism as well with the 30-meter telescope situation and how he handled uh, Mauna Kea. 
the incumbent mayor there on the Big Island completely shut out of the general election. The incumbent there defeated. Um, it looks like Mitch Roth there and uh, Ikaika Marzo, they'll be facing off in the fall to become uh, the next Big Island mayor. Mitch Roth there in the lead with 31.1%, Ikaika Marzo 21.2%. Again, they will face off in November in the Hawaii County mayor's race. But the big headline there, incumbent mayor Harry Kim defeated and completely shut out in November. So definitely a big upset there on the Big Island. All right, we'll switch. Well, switching gears now to coronavirus, uh, President Donald Trump signed an executive order that addresses the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. And as Karina Mitchell reports, Democrats criticize that measure. They're calling for Republicans to resume negotiations. President Trump sidestepping Congress Saturday night, issuing an executive order and three other directives. Restarting unemployment benefits, but cutting those weekly checks to $400, 75% to be paid by the federal government. The other 25% must be paid by the states. Extending eviction moratoriums, deferring interest on federal student loans, and enacting payroll tax cuts, something opposed by both parties. Through these four actions, my administration will provide immediate and vital relief to Americans struggling in this difficult time. However, the Constitution gives Congress, not the President, control over federal spending. Yesterday's move likely to face legal challenges, especially by cash-strapped states who shouldered much of the financial burden fighting COVID-19. If legal action is brought against you on this, why not just work with Congress on this deal? Well, I'm not saying they're not going to come back and negotiate. They might very well come back and negotiate. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer released a joint statement saying, in part, these announcements do nothing to increase testing, nothing to reopen schools, nothing to put food on the table for hungry families, nothing to prevent heroes being laid off across state and local government, nothing on many critical needs of the American people. And as parents in school districts across the nation grapple with how to return kids to school safely, concerns over a rare illness linked to COVID-19, multisystem inflammatory syndrome, or MISC, which attacks a child's vital organs. Alarming numbers from the CDC showing the illness has killed at least 10 children, sickening nearly 600 others. Much like the virus itself, MISC is disproportionately impacting Latino and black children, accounting for nearly three quarters of all cases and health experts say obesity is the most common underlying medical condition. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, three more Honolulu firefighters also contracted COVID-19. According to the fire department, two of them are from the Kalihi Kai Station. The other one is from the Hawaii Kai Station. Now, that brings the total number of personnel who've tested positive to 14. Now, that includes six at the Hawaii Kai Fire Station, three at Moanalua, and five from Kalihi Kai. Now, all of them right now are under self-quarantine. Well, Kamehameha Schools reported another employee there tested positive for the virus. According to a letter that was sent out to parents yesterday, it's a high school employee who works at the Kapalama campus. The worker is now in isolation and close contacts have been notified. Another Kamehameha Schools employee tested positive as well. Well, the Department of Health is advising anybody who went to a gentleman's club in Honolulu between July 23rd and the 25th might want to contact your provider. They're reporting that a dancer at the club tested positive for COVID-19. No word yet on which club that person danced at. And if you see anybody violating the orders, there's a, a line that you can actually report them. It's part of the city's new COVID enforcement hotline that's run by the Honolulu Police Department. You know, they say do not call 911 if it's a non-emergency. That's why they've set up this line here. Starting today at 10 in the morning, you can call that number there. It's 723-3900, or you can also send an email to hpdcovidenforce at honolulu.gov. Well, new this morning, Honolulu police issued 20, 220 citations to people allegedly violating Oahu's Act with Care Do Not Gather order yesterday. Under that order, of course, all city parks, uh, beaches, and recreational facilities are closed until September 4th. Gatherings are also limited to less than 10 people. Well, also new this morning, officers with the Department of Land and Natural Resources issued some warnings to 10 kayakers yesterday for allegedly making an illegal landing on what's known as Flat Island off of Kailua. Now, under the current COVID-19 emergency orders, all the offshore islands, that includes the Sandbar and Kaneohe, and all the state parks are off limits.
right? And, uh, you know, it might be a good day. You know, you can't go out to the, uh, go kayaking to those offshore islands, but can still go out in the water. So, Allison, is going to be a good day for uh, possibly surfing. Hey, Tom, that's right. We've seen some light showers on our live camera right there and some partly cloudy skies as well. But once that passing rain clears up for those windward and Mauka areas, it's sure to be a nice and breezy end to our weekend. Taking a look at our forecast winds here, we're expecting easterly trades to come in 15 to 25 miles per hour. Winds are a bit on the lighter side to start off our day. But current temperatures are in the mid to upper 70s, already 80 degrees in places like Kaneohe and in Kahului. And Kahului actually had record-breaking heat yesterday. Like I mentioned earlier, we 93 degrees there but it is also going to be a warm Sunday reaching 88 in Waimea for today 86 in Kapa'a windward areas will be cooler with more clouds and a higher chance of rain while leeward areas should be sunnier and dry although our winds have the potential to push isolated showers over to those leeward areas Maui County nice and breezy for today again up to 25 miles per hour with stronger gusts high in Kahului at 91 degrees and 82 in Lanai City and taking a look at the Big Island, Hilo has had a chance of passing showers for this morning. Partly cloudy there, 85 degrees, and then more sunshine in Kailua Kona at 88. And then here's a check on your extended forecast. We have our breezy to moderate trades and warm weather sticking around all week long. If you want to go outside and enjoy the outdoors, make sure you do so responsibly. Just keep your distance and no groups larger than 10. That's a check on your forecast. Tom, I'll send it back to you. All right, nice and sunny. That's what we like to hear. Allison bringing us a good forecast for your Sunday. Meanwhile, coming up on Good Morning Hawaii, an incredible encounter all caught on camera. We're going to show you this tour boat's footage that you won't want to miss. Time now, 743. Stay with us. Good Morning Hawaii continues after the break. This segment of KITV4 Island News is brought to you by Spectrum Enterprise. Welcome to the new tomorrow where the challenges are unpredictable and the demands unreasonable. But one thing we know for sure, you still need a network, one that's flexible, reliable, and up for anything. And providing that network is what we're built to do. Spectrum Enterprise. Welcome to Ali'i Animal Resort. I'm Matt Malta, Resort Director. Our veterinary care team oversees playtime in doggy daycare, grooming, and all overnight stays. Ali'i Animal, helping pets live their best life. Visit ali'ianimal.com. Okay, yeah, that was headquarters. We've been made. We've got to dish the car. Yes, let's go. What are we going to do with the car? We can't just ditch it. Well, they did pay it to save the world. Why don't we start by saving a life? Mahalo for your donation to Kidney Cars. We'll pick up the car from any location. Donate a car, save a life. Call Kidney Cars today for more information. Thank you, Hawaii, for your votes in Kiai tv 4s Viewer's Choice Awards. And congratulations to... Tanioka Seafood and Catering. Thank you for voting us KITV's Best of Hawaii Viewer's Choice Awards. Need something? Try Check City Mill. Whether you have a green thumb, black thumb, or even two thumbs, City Mill's got your garden needs covered. Need something fast? Try Check City Mill. Now with buy online, pick up in store. CityMill.com makes researching and buying so much easier. And your order's ready in two business hours. And don't forget to sign up at CityMill.com for special offers, promotions, and events. Need something? Try Check City Mill and CityMill.com. This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by City Mill. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 745. And the CEO of Delta Airlines says the carrier has banned more than 100 people who are refusing to wear masks during their flights. Now, passengers can't get on board without covering up. But they say some people are refusing to keep the masks on, and that's caused some big disruptions, and it actually forced at least one plane to have to return to the gate. Now, Delta says those who refuse will also be banned from booking any future flights on Delta. And meanwhile, Alaska Airlines is offering flyers a chance to get the row all to themselves. Always nice when you get the row to yourself. It's having a buy one, get one sale from the West Coast to Florida 
Everywhere in between, travelers who purchase a main cabin fare will get a second ticket for just the cost of the taxes and the fees. Now, this deal is good for travel through October 31st. The masks also required there on Alaskan, and the middle seats will be blocked off through October. And from the land to the sea, none of the major cruise lines are going to be setting sail anytime soon. It's suspended at least through October. That's according to the Cruise Line International Association. Now that includes some of the big names like Carnival, Disney, Norwegian, and Royal Caribbean. The group says it's holding off because of the health and safety of their passengers and their crew. All right, well, it's an awe-inspiring sight. It was all caught on camera. A group of friends on a boat had a close-up experience with a humpback whale. Josh Brogadier captured this video from the encounter. All from the North Shore, three of them here out on a boat Friday afternoon saw this whale just a quarter mile offshore. They followed it for about half an hour, giving it space, surprised it was only in about 30 feet of water, hoping, hoping, and then the payoff. Yes! But it's like unbridled joy, like it felt like a kid, you know, like back when we were all young and it's like just something so exciting you can't control yourself. It was just like, it was amazing. And we're a little bit closer. Uh, that's when its tail came out and we noticed that it was really a humpback. Um, and uh, and then to have it breach in front of us like that was was shocking. Oh my God. It was uh, it was really exciting. It was really just the right place, right time. and, and uh, Really lucky and grateful to see nature at its best. All that excitement. The breach is well worth another look. Right in front of them, they were only about 50 feet away. A whale tail or fluke, these friends will never forget. All right, thanks to Josh Brogadier for that report. Turning now to your weather, here's a live look out at Waikiki with Diamond Head in the distance. I can't see any whales in that shot, but Allison has hopefully a whale of a forecast for us, right? <laughs> Hey, Tom, check out this girl ready to catch some waves. Mahalo to Darren Mia Shero for sending us this shot. If you want to see your, your photo featured, send it to pics at kitv.com. Now, if you're planning to catch some waves today, we have strong easterly trade winds coming in up to 25 miles per hour, and that is whipping up our waves. We have choppy four to six footers for our east-facing shores, two to four for the south, and one to three for the north and west. High tide is around 840 this morning at 1.3 feet. And the heads of boaters, we also have a small craft advisory ongoing from yesterday. It is now expanded to cover coastal waters around Oahu and Kauai. We have east winds 15 to 30 knots with str strongest of those winds in channels around Maui County and the Big Island. That advisory is in effect until 6 o'clock tonight. Now taking a look at the Big Island, looking pretty dry here compared to the rest of the state. Hourly forecast shows clouds for this morning in Gila with more rain coming around this afternoon. Over in Kailua Kona, a little bit more sunshine here with partly cloudy skies. Maui County, some scattered showers moving in toward Hana and just offshore north of Molokai. On Oahu, though, more activity here on our radar with a band of rain stretching all along the windward coast and for our Mauka areas as well with more moderate pockets in Kanayohe and Liie. Hourly forecast shows a mix of sun and clouds all day long. Kauai County also looking drier compared to earlier this morning. More sunshine coming in around 11 o'clock. And here is your extended forecast. Like I mentioned earlier, the breezy conditions and warm weather sticks around all week long. Thankfully, those trades will give us some relief from that heat. That's a check on your forecast, Tom. Back to you. All right, get out there and enjoy it. Thanks, Allison. Meanwhile, turning to your news around the world, anti-government fury is boiling over in Beirut following the devastating blast that killed over 150 people and wounded thousands more. Protesters took to the streets Saturday demanding political reform. Arwa Damon is in Beirut right now with more. The Lebanese are furious and angry demonstrators made that abundantly clear during Saturday's protests, displaying nooses inside downtown Beirut and also some of them attacking and temporarily taking over a series of government ministries. The Lebanese prime minister came out and said that they would be passing legislation to allow for early elections, but that is highly unlikely to appease this population because this level of anger is not just about the explosion that took place that devastated and crushed the soul of this city. It is about the economic downturn, the endemic corruption that took place, the reality that 
the currency has taken such a spiral that right now people's money is worth 75% less than it used to be. About 70% of the population prior to this explosion, according to international humanitarian organizations, was in need of humanitarian need. They can barely find money to put food on the table. How are they supposed to find the money to be able to rebuild? There is an international conference taking place uh, in Paris, Paris, a donor conference, and Western countries and others that are partaking in this have made it abundantly clear to the Lebanese authorities that this is not carte blanche for them to be able to do what they want. There are certain reforms that are to be expected for this country right now trying to rebuild itself. They are not turning to their leaders. They are turning to one another. Arwa Damon, Beirut. And meanwhile, today, Japan is marking the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Nagasaki. Survivors and families of victims offered flowers and prayers at a memorial ceremony in the northwestern Japanese city. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was also in attendance and paid respect to the victims. Back in 1945, the U.S. dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing tens of thousands of people. More people died later from complications from burns or radiation-related illnesses. Well, Oprah Winfrey's O Magazine is putting up billboards in Kentucky, calling for the officers involved in the killing of Breonna Taylor to be arrested and charged. Taylor, a 26-year-old EMT, was shot multiple times in March by police who forced their way into her apartment. O Magazine is putting up 12, 26 billboards, one for each year of Taylor's life, to amplify her story and fight for justice in her name. All right, well, time now, 7.52, and coming up on Good Morning Hawaii, Chester the Cheetah entering the world of pasta with a new product. We'll see how that goes. Uh, don't go away. Good Morning Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Sunday morning. Watch KITV4 Island News tonight at 10. Thank you, Hawaii, for your votes in KITV4's Best of Hawaii's Viewer's Choice Awards. And congratulations to... Hele, we're here to help you hele on. If you've been injured, insurance companies will try to deny your claim. It will be a legal battle, and you deserve to win. Call an experienced injury attorney. Call Judith Ann Pavey. Behind every mask is a smile. Behind every hello is an eagerness to do our best. Behind every transaction is a deep appreciation for you. Whether you connect with us in branch, by phone, online, or on our mobile app, we're here to lend a hand, ease your worries, and share a smile. Because the best way to get through this is together. St. Francis Healthcare System is creating something new and exciting. The St. Francis Kupuna Village in Liliha. The former hospital campus is being transformed into a health and wellness community for seniors and their caregivers. Featuring a skilled nursing facility and an array of physicians in different specialties. With future plans for assisted living and independent living and a senior community center. Call today for more information. St. Francis Healthcare System. Creating healthy communities for Hawaii's families. When Roy decided to create an elegant interior for his original restaurant, the Roy's in Hawaii Kai, one name popped up, Kevin from Selective Stone. Kevin is a professional. His products are just number one. It was absolute a pleasure to deal with Kevin and his team. There is no other company we will deal with other than Selective Stone. Selective Stone, a Kamaina company, services the commercial and residential industry for over 20 years. The low prices are just a part of our great service. All right, welcome back. Your time now, 7.55. And you know that song, it's the final countdown. That's what I feel like it's like right now. We've been waiting all morning. Uh, we've been told that there are still those 17,000 or so final votes uh, out of Oahu that we're waiting on that could decide some of those races there. Annalisa, she's been there all morning. Annalisa, any updates right now? We've all been waiting. That's right, Tom. It could be several hours still though until we get the final count and that's because the state elections officials here are still going through 17 thousand to 18 thousand ballots here 
from Honolulu County alone. And again, there are some very close races to watch. Uh, specifically, we talked about uh, House Speaker Scott Saiki getting a run for his money for District 26 against Kim Koko Iwamoto. There's only a spread of 239 votes. So whatever happens here will decide that race. Also, uh, the race for District 22, very, very close. Uh, the Democratic uh, seat there for Ala Moana and Waikiki between Adrian Tam and Tom Brower. That's a difference of 100 votes. So again, Tom, lots of things to follow as we're seeing um, these last minute uh, ballots being counted. So race is gonna be decided definitely this morning. We'll have more information, of course, on KITV4.com as well as on our social media. So be sure to follow all of us for that. Back to you, Tom, in the studio. Thanks, Annalisa. Historic turnout there so far in our election, just waiting to count those final votes. Meanwhile, check this out. Cheetos is launching its own mac and cheese. I don't know about that. The, uh, three, favors, oh, the three flavors include bold and cheesy, flaming hot and cheesy, and cheesy and jalapeno. The company says the idea came from a fan who was already using Cheetos to make a homemade mac and cheese. The new mac and cheese will be available uh, in both boxes and single serve cups but only at Walmart. That's, I think that's dangerous for those of us that work in news, that work weird hours, having to, having to microwave our food, but I don't know how I feel about that. What do you think, We don't Allison? eat very well over here. It's a lot of chips, and, you know, we're trying to get more fruit into our newsroom. I know. We're, I know. We're trying to eat healthier right now, and this and this isn't helping us right now. You know what? I think I would try the jalapeno mac and cheese. Though I read some reviews online. They did not try that one, but I'm willing to test it out. Yeah, I'll test that one out, too, because, like, when I, when I make actual mac and cheese, I usually put, like, sriracha or something to spice it up anyway so I think yeah it needs a little bit more of a kick you don't exactly. want just you don't want just plain you know <laughs> gonna make it fancy yeah all right meanwhile uh, former heavyweight boxing champ Mike Tyson kicks off the Discovery Channel Shark Week by taking on another th uh, none other than a shark what else no word on exactly how Tyson and the shark will interact or what this face-off will entail but the network says no sharks were injured uh, and that special airs today so hopefully you don't, you know, we live in Hawaii. You can just go outside and see sharks half the time, you know, but. <laughs> no sharks were harmed, though. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, the good news there. All right, well, uh, thanks for joining us. Our next newscast will be tonight at 5. Meanwhile, we'll continue to be on social media tracking the latest on those election 2020 numbers as they come in. Aloha. Rick Kwan, weeknights on KITV4 Island News tonight at 10. Accurate and experienced KITV4's Island Weather Team. Whether you're looking to revamp or renew your floor in commercial or residential, with our teams of experts and state-of-the-art dustless system, we can get started on your project much sooner than the other guys. Just ask the flooring specialist. Over 100 different flooring options designed to fit almost any budget. We'll guide you through every step of the way. Visit our showroom or schedule your free in-home estimate at hawaiihardwoodinc.com or call us today at 808-842-7755. Flooring specialist is a licensed contractor, license C33719. You've probably heard a lot about CBD. At Medicaid 08, our products are backed by science and tested for purity by third party, offering the highest quality in CBD products for pain management on Oahu. I used to suffer from diabetes, but after taking the oil, I was totally taken off the medication. And I have good news, the product works. Visit us at a location near you and stop hurting today. Thank you, Hawaii, for your votes in Kai TV 4s Viewer's Choice Awards. And congratulations to... Big City Diner. There's no diner finer than Big City 